Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh huh. So come get some. Cromcon. Cromcon. Madness Entertainment Group presents the Madness Comic Network with original programming and additional comic-related content. Tune in and subscribe to Comic Talk with Pops Van Zandt on YouTube. Welcome to a show on Tuesday. I'm your host, Tim TK, and I am rocking it solo tonight. Uh, Jose is currently occupied, Mackenzie is still recovering, and uh, Mr. Quentin Bedwell is currently on sabbatical. We may have uh, someone else from the Serverline community join us later on. We will see. I'm getting harassed by a cat. Um, but if we don't, we'll just keep it short and simple today. Uh, it's kind of a quick show, mostly here to run ads. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, hopefully everyone who chimes in finds it fun and educational nonetheless. Uh, so we're just going to have a, a quick talk here on uh, comic book lettering a little bit here. Uh, this is mostly just going to be kind of what I have top of mind, a few notes. Uh, but if anyone has any questions or anything in particular you want to know about comic book lettering feel free to post that in chat and we will get you answered give me one second here i'll get some notes put up uh, go yeah 
plug in real quick. Okay. So, uh, yeah, comic book letters are kind of a weird thing uh, because they definitely, if they work well, they're probably what you notice least about a comic unless you're really looking for it. Um, but if they don't work, then you absolutely notice them because they are, they'll kill everything else. Bad letters can kill artwork, it can kill a story. Um, you know, uh, you can even kill pacing, something as uh, amorphous as pacing of a story by having bad letters with it. And so we'll kind of start by defining what lettering is, and that is the text that actually appears on a comic book page. That is the speech, the speech bubbles, um, sound effects, and if they're not drawn in by the inker or penciler. Um, any sort of annotations or um, square pop-ups, anything like that. Uh, sometimes inserts, um, but anytime you can actually have letters on a page. Uh, with good lettering, you're going to notice that it's going to naturally guide a reader's eyes around the panel and throughout the page. A good letterer is going to essentially use the dialogue that's being spoken as a guide to go from artwork to artwork without actually overstepping on the artwork. Uh, so that way, the reader gets the full experience. They get to have you're you're kind of you're you're want, you want to curate and guide the tour of the comic. Um, so that way the reader's getting the full experience without having to you know f focus or think about shifting their eyes to where they need to go next. Uh, bad letters will either be in an order that doesn't do that. They might, you know, uh, you can get the point where it almost feels like it's reading backwards, or you might even overstep and cover Hellcat points of the art with lettering, which is not good for anyone. Um, the cat takes out my cable. That could be interesting. So, uh, with all that being said, um, that's kind of why uh, a focus on ungood letters is uh, kind of critical because it you if you have good letters, your readers not going to notice it, but they're going to be able to read the comic uninterrupted. If you have bad letters the reader will absolutely notice it. So uh, a few things to focus on. Uh, the legibility of the lettering. Uh, so with lettering, you want to be in... You can have... It's a, a, I would encourage using non-traditional fonts. You know, get creative with it. Be spicy if you want to be. Uh, hey, Pops, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, get spicy with your lettering. Uh, if you want to use a, you know, the, if it matches the tone of the comic or the tone of the character speaking, use uh, a non-traditional font, use a non-traditional bubble. Um, you know, if you want to hand etch it in, it's fine. Uh, most lettering now is going to be done with things like Adobe Illustrate. So if you, so hand lettering isn't really a thing that happens as much anymore. But, you know, if you do and it adds to the tone of the comic, absolutely go for that. But don't go to the point where, People can't read your handwriting and don't use fonts that are hard to read. Uh, because if people can't read the comic, they're just going to flip through, see the splash pages, and put it down. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things where you less is going to be more. You want people to not notice your lettering, uh, because that means that they're actually enjoying what you've done. Uh, and same vein, like I said, feel free to be spicy with it. Different characters are going to have speak differently, but we can't actually have different voices in the comic because there's no audio. But like in a movie, you're not going to have two characters with exactly the same voice unless, uh, you know, you're running uh, Keanu Reeves against Keanu Reeves. But 
people talk differently, characters talk differently. Uh, and even more so, you're going to have in comics, you know, we have they love robots, zombies, demons, uh, all the stuff. And these people are going to have, you know, if you want to have special effects on the voice, you can allude to that by getting fancy typography using the different font for them. If, uh, you know, you, you can notice this in the Iron Man comics when Iron Man is talking in the suit, uh, they'll use a square bubble that almost looks more like a, a radio blurb. Then when Tony is out of the suit, he uses a traditional lettering bubble. So being creative with that is going to add an additional sound effect that can't be conveyed any other way to the reader. Uh, and when you are using sound effects, uh, get creative with those as well. Find ways to do that that aren't as uh, obvious as just putting it on the page. If something is causing a specific sound effect, like if there's a gun go gunshot going off and you're not just putting bang underneath the gunshot, you could make the gunshot into the bang sound effect or in uh, Wolf Hunter example of this, we have a scene where a train is pulling into London station and the whoosh sound effect we actually have made in the smoke coming out of the smokestack. Uh, so these are going to be little things that uh, are good ways to draw attention to the lettering that add impact to the world around you because, you know, comics are all about... Uh, all parts working together to create one immersive story and one immersive world. So using your lettering to add to that by drawing attention to these specific elements uh, can be uh, very effective. Uh, make sure you are consistent with your lettering. Um, the same character should not have different letters from one issue to the next. Um, and God forbid you give them different letters from one panel to the next. Uh, everyone should, uh, you know, you, you want to be, like with all things, be consistent with it. And the best way to do this, if you're working something with Adobe Illustrator, you can actually go ahead and turn your bubbles and your, you know, text stylings into templates or saved objects. And then uh, to get them saved layers and uh, save that as one project. And then whatever panel you're working on, or whatever page you're working on, if you do panel by panel or page by page, however you're lettering, pull that in as a new layer to that project every time, but keep that project untouched. Um, I believe you can also save them as elements. And I haven't lettered in a little bit, but you can also save them as elements, and then uh, you'll be able to pull them into other projects. But I prefer to keep just essentially just one working project open, and then every time just pull a new panel into that uh, it's that way the workspace stays consistent and your letters stay consistent for your character. Uh, you know, otherwise you end up getting the same effect. Like if, uh, you know, recasting someone mid season, kind of the, uh, how off putting that is for the audience. You get the same effect if the letters change mid issue. And, uh, yeah, the other thing that like, note wise I have for letters is uh, if you're still hand lettering, no good on you. But if you want to up your pace or if you feel like you're just getting into lettering, uh, some level of digital literacy can help a ton. So uh, looking at Adobe Illustrate or other alternatives, um, looking up, you know, their like full courses, beginner courses on YouTube, on the internet, uh, sitting down and spending two or three hours before even starting a project, just learning the software. Uh, that way, when you're working with it, you're going to be very comfortable with it and you're going to move a lot quicker. Uh, let me check real quick here. Uh, so I already said I use um, uh, Adobe Illustrator. Um, and you can pull fonts from Blambot. Um, uh, GIMP is actually fairly decent. I use GIMP now instead of Photoshop for day-to-day uh, -day work. Um, it is. Uh, it takes a little 
getting used to, but yeah. Um, Inkscape is what I actually recommend second to Illustrator over GIMP. Uh, Inkscape is it's like an open source Illustrator, so like GIMP is to Photoshop, Inkscape is to uh, Illustrator. Uh, Inkscape is also great for coloring. Uh, so uh, if you're just looking into getting into lettering comics and you just got some sample pages you want to work on to put together a portfolio, uh, pull those into Inkscape and, and learn the software. Uh, I would say also if you're looking to get into lettering, sample pages on sample pages, <laughs> um, you're going to find, you can just Google unlettered comic pages uh, everywhere. Or even if you have friends who are already in comics, ask them to send you some unlettered pages uh, just so you can create samples. Uh, because when you're you know looking to get work, that's what people are going to ask for. And even if it's not published, you'll have proof that you have completed a page and done letters on it and people can see if they like what you did or not. Uh, not really something you can fake until you make it, but also the nice about lettering is that it is, it has, if, in my experience, it's a skill you can pick up rather quickly if you have a good eye for for uh, basic design elements and, and design flow. Um, I said earlier where you're talking about guiding the reader through the panels. You are, in essence, using a little bit of digital design, visual design to create a visual guide. Um, you are not only the person recording the voices for the movie, but you're also the camera operator. You're the person guiding each person through each shot. So while you didn't necessarily decide the shot, you have, you have the responsibility of guiding the reader through it. So that's that's the notes I have. Uh, I normally we've had time to discuss it with, you know, co-hosts, but it's just me at the moment, so... Just kind of rattled through all my notes. So you guys just kind of got a 15-minute lecture on comic book lettering. Uh, hopefully it's interesting. <laughs> Examples of good lettering. Um, I'm going to keep on blowing this comic every time I, I come on, but Department of Truth has great letters. Um, the uh, Tinian Batman run, uh, Joker War in particular, had some great lettering to it as well. Um all of uh, Powers of X, House of X, uh, in just kind of recent history, we can think of. Uh, really fun letters. Um, look up um, curse words, curse words from Image. Uh, that had the the letters were in themselves were vibrant and had their own personality as well as being very effective in guiding you through each, the through the artwork. So I'd absolutely recommend looking at curse words for that. Um, bad letters. Uh, I think I've blocked most out of my mind. They exist out there. The, the Marvel, not the Marvel, the uh, Blizzard. The Overwatch comics had some bad letters for Kirkley. And uh, oh god, what was it? The Sado. I can't remember. I believe it was the Sado or the Sabat, something like that. Uh, indie comic. Uh, I could not get through that because the letters were uh, not allowing the artwork to breathe. And then also, not only that, there can be the letters were created right to left and then placed on top of all the artwork. It was very annoying. But yeah. If anyone has any questions. Let me know in the chat. If not, we'll run an ad. We'll do a five minute cooldown. We'll treat this as like a 30 minute episode. <laughs> um, so, hopefully, you guys found that informative. Uh, I'm going to run this ad. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Or if you have anything to talk about, throw them in there as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, be back. Give me one second. <laughs>
All right. Well, uh, like I said, that was our and our, our other for the sort of Kickstarter currently going on. Uh, it's been a short episode on comic book lettering. None of my uh, co-hosts are here to talk about it, so I just kind of gave you a, a brief lecture uh, over what I had top of mind and some notes I had. Um, I'll give you another two minutes if anyone has any questions or anything like that, but uh, if not, I think we'll call it there because I got nothing else to really go over. <laughs> um, uh, uh, that's, you know, unless anyone wants any homework or anything like that. Uh, if you want practice, uh, I said download Inkscape, uh, Google, uh, non lettered comic pages, sample comic pages, anything like that, and uh, just go at it. Look up uh, YouTube tutorials on lettering. Um, create yourself a little bubble template, uh, creating a couple layers of circles, throw it onto your uh, project, create some tails, and uh, just go to town. Uh, like with anything, you only learn, learn by doing, really. So uh, there are some pretty good guides on YouTube for the actual uh, practical of it. If uh, I had time to prepare, for uh, not having hosts, uh, I kind of wasn't expecting to be alone here tonight. I probably would have gone through and actually uh, got some stuff ready, and then we would have made fill time by actually going through and doing a guided uh, tutorial on creating letters. But this is just kind of the overview of best practices. So I hope you'll find this informative. Um, I'll be back next week, hopefully with the full crew. We'll probably revisit the subject uh, sometime soon when I have uh, people with me again. Um, so you actually get more input on it as well as more samples that are, are just from my view. Uh, art is subjective. So uh, my examples of good lettering are maybe not the same as others. So um, yeah, I hope you all have a good night. I'll see you next week. Make sure to check out uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Wednesday and Sunday for Wednesday Wham and Silver Sunday. See you guys then. <laughs>